So you have just been told that your pregnancy has ended in miscarriage and now you're being offered a surgical option to manage it. First of all, I just want to say that I am so sorry this is happening and whether it's come to you as a complete shock or it's followed days of uncertainty, hearing those words is heartbreaking. And you're not alone. Miscarriage is unfortunately very common. Around one in four pregnancies ends this way and most often that happens in the first trimester. And just because it's common doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, but I just want you to know that you are not walking this path alone. I have got a separate video that explains all the different options for your next steps after you've been told you have a miscarriage. But one of those options available after a miscarriage is surgical management. And that's what I want to go into more detail on today. Surgical management of miscarriage is also known as SMM or ERPC, evacuation of retained products of conception, or a DNC, meaning dilatation and curatage. Either way, if you're facing this decision right now and you're feeling unsure or overwhelmed, I hope that this video helps. We're gonna walk through what the procedure involves, why it might be offered, what your recovery might look like, and how to make a decision that feels right for you. So first up, what is surgical management of miscarriage? Surgical management of miscarriage is a short procedure that aims to remove pregnancy tissue from the womb. It's usually offered in one of three situations. Firstly, if your miscarriage hasn't completed on its own, so it's started, you've had some bleeding, but there's still some tissue inside. Secondly, if you are experiencing an emergency, so if you're having very heavy bleeding or you're showing signs of an infection and doctors don't feel it's safe to wait for the pregnancy tissue to come out on its own. And finally, you might choose it as the option that just feels the most manageable for you emotionally and physically. Surgical management is one of three main ways to manage a miscarriage alongside expectant management, which is where you wait for the tissue to pass on its own if it can or medical management, which is where medication is used to start or to complete the miscarriage process. All of these choices are valid. Your choice may depend on how you are feeling physically, emotionally, and what kind of experience that you want to avoid or control. Surgical management is often chosen by people who feel that they want some kind of certainty. They want to know a date and a time they can come in. They might want things to be managed swiftly, or they may have had a previous difficult miscarriage experience. There are two main types of surgical management. The usual procedure is done under general anaesthetic, but another option is called manual vacuum aspiration or MVA. And this is a similar process, but instead of being asleep, it's done in a gynecology outpatients department whilst you are awake, but perhaps with some local anaesthetic or sedation and some oral painkillers. Although this process is called surgical management, it's important to remember that it's actually not a typical surgery as nothing is actually being cut open. It's a suction procedure. So what happens before the procedure? Well, once the surgical management has been recommended or chosen, you'll have a chance to speak to a doctor or a nurse. They'll explain the procedure to you in full and they'll give you some leaflets and maybe ask you to sign a consent form. Before the surgery, you may need a blood test, which can check things like your iron levels and also your blood group. You might also be given some advice about when you should stop eating and drinking if you're having a general anaesthetic. And you may be given a chance to ask all your questions. Now, don't worry if you don't remember everything all at once. You can bring your partner or a friend, you can write things down, or you can just ask to have a follow-up appointment to talk things through again later when you've got a clearer mind. You're allowed to ask also for some reassurance about what may happen in the future. It's usually a day case procedure. You can come in and then go home the same day. And there might also be some additional forms to sign where we talk about what might happen to your pregnancy tissue after the procedure when it's going to be sent to the lab. Next, what happens during the procedure itself? A surgical management of miscarriage actually only takes around 10 to 15 minutes, but you'll be in hospital for a few hours in total. And here is what you can expect to happen. Firstly, if you're having it under general anaesthetic, you'll be taken into an anaesthetic room and there you'll have a cannula placed probably in your hand or your arm and you'll be given the anaesthetic medication either via a drip or you'll be given it via the mask. Then you'll be asleep for the procedure or alternatively, if you're having a manual vacuum aspiration MVA, you may receive some local anaesthetic. Once you're comfortable, a speculum is then inserted and your cervix is gently dilated. Then we use a small suction device called a suction curatage and that's inserted through the cervix and there the pregnancy tissue and any blood clots are suctioned away. The procedure is commonly done using ultrasound guidance. We've got an ultrasound machine which we can wheel into theatre. We can check before we start exactly where that tissue might be sitting so we can direct the probe and then after the procedure is done we can check with the ultrasound scan and make sure that the uterus is empty. 
Sometimes if your pregnancy tissue is very small, we might recommend doing the procedure with the help of something called a hysteroscope, which is actually a camera that's inserted through the cervix into the womb. And I've got a separate video that's all about hysteroscopy. Either way, especially if you're asleep, you shouldn't feel anything at all. Or if you're under local anaesthetic or a little bit of light sedation, you should be kept comfortable throughout the procedure. So what happens afterwards? Well, you'll usually wake up in a recovery area where your nurses will monitor you until you're ready to go home. And here is what you can expect. So you can expect some bleeding. You'll wake up wearing a pad and you can expect a bit of bleeding for the first few days. It's like a light period, possibly lasting for up to two weeks. You may also feel some cramping, like some mild period cramps, particularly on the first day after the procedure. Again, it should be manageable with some painkillers like paracetamol or ibuprofen for a few days. You might also feel very emotional. It's common to feel tired, to feel tearful, relieved, sad, or even just numb. There's no right way to feel. You may feel sleepy, especially if you've had a general anaesthetic, you'll certainly feel a bit sleepy or groggy for a day or so as the anaesthetic wears off. It's best not to drive during that time. And you'll usually also be advised to wear a pad instead of a tampon until your bleeding stops, that you should avoid sex or swimming for at least a week or again until your bleeding has stopped. And you should take it easy for a few days, especially if you've had that general anaesthetic. If following the procedure, you do experience any heavy bleeding, so you're soaking through your pads every hour or so, or if you get a fever, or you notice your discharge has a strong smell, you should contact your GP or your early pregnancy unit straight away because it can be signs of infection. So what about aftercare? What follow-up might you have? Well, in many cases, no routine follow-up is needed, but you might be asked to do a pregnancy test about three weeks after the procedure to check that the pregnancy tissue has all cleared. You can expect your period to return within about four to six weeks, and you can try for another pregnancy pretty much as soon as you feel ready. But many people take some time emotionally, that's absolutely okay. And we do recommend that you should wait until after your first period following the procedure ideally. If when you do that pregnancy test, it's still positive after three weeks, or you're just not sure about anything, you should contact your care team straight away. They might need to scan you or reassess. So some common questions we get asked, will you feel differently afterwards? Well, physically, you may feel back to your normal self within a few days. There's no cuts or stitches to heal from this type of surgery, but emotionally it might take a bit longer and your feelings may shift from day to day. Does having this procedure affect your future fertility? Well, in most cases, no. A straightforward surgical management for miscarriage doesn't affect your ability to conceive again. In very rare cases, some people can get an infection after, or they might require repeated procedures. And that situation can increase the risk of scar tissue within the uterus. That's a condition known as Asherman syndrome. So if you see that your periods become really, really light after you have a miscarriage or they don't return at all, you should go back and see your care provider. Can you have someone with you? Well, yes, you can ask your unit if someone can join you for your procedure. They might not be able to come to the operating theatre if you're having general anaesthetic, but there should usually be somewhere that they can wait for you. And you'll likely need someone to take you home afterwards too. So however early your miscarriage happens, it is a loss and it hurts. Take your time to grieve. You might feel angry, you might feel nothing, you might feel everything all at once. You deserve to be cared for and supported and informed. And whether you've chosen surgery or medication or just to wait for things to happen naturally, there is no right or wrong here. There is only your path. So if you're looking for support and you're based in the UK, I recommend the Miscarriage Association or Tommy's Charity offer brilliant resources and helplines. So I hope this video helped you to feel more prepared and maybe a little less alone. And if it did, maybe share it with someone who might be going through the same thing. If you do have any questions, please pop them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them.